When I was in a primary school, I went to the hospital. I will suffer from eyes, yeah? Those nurses and the doctors was killing them, was treating them, and I got inspired. Really, I forgot what brings me there, because I think that I could be like them. I had the purpose of being a doctor. We used to fetch water far from my home. There is no power or water like that. Our neighbor, he told my dad that the profit of girls is to get pregnant, and you will be great for that. And I told my dad that, don't imagine that lumas, because it is a lumas, because I have many things to do. I have where to achieve. My empowerment as a woman didn't start with me being here in, in the United States or at Harvard. It started when I was at Kishore. What is my future like? What do I want to do? How am I going to develop into this strong woman in whatever I'll be doing? Before I started college, I was interested in oncology. My interests have shifted to looking at health at a macro level. I'm really passionate about global health. Gashar really did provide a platform for me to grow. What I needed was the seed to be planted, and now it's me doing all the work to actually keep it growing. I'm a biology major on a pre-med track and this semester I'm taking four classes, one of which is organic chemistry. In Rwanda, what most girls do not get is that space for them to grow. They have home staff, they have school staff, they have like the competition between men and women. It's just uh, so much going on at the same time. So I got sure having that space really provided resources that I need now. One day I was going to the hospital and I asked a doctor from there, what can I do so that I can reach down your level? And she told me that if we don't continue our university, we not become a doctor. And I was so scared. Eh, I look at my parents, I look at my background, they say that, oh my God, how are, you, are they going to pay for me university? Even though I struggle, I keep working hard, and I did my national exam well. I was the first in my school as well as my district. My dad and my, my mom was, uh, they was laughing because their, their daughter really get a good mark. One day, the Shruggers Academy, they call my dad and they, they tell him that your daughter she is allowed to study here. You can't imagine how I was <laughs> proud. If I study science, who will help me to achieve on my purpose. I'm giving you around 10 minutes to be through with that. The mission of Rwanda Girls Initiative is to really seek out and find the best and brightest girls in the country that have an interest in studying science and technology. They go from maybe a really high potential but quiet girl who has never been out of her village to a student that's thinking about university opportunities around the globe. The girls that come to Gashora Girls Academy aren't the your wealthiest girls. They know how lucky they are. They know that if they do what's right, their lives are going to change. 
They have to rely on their heads. They have to rely on their hard work. They have to rely on doing what is right right now. They can have a shot at the university, at a scholarship. You remember the last time we have picked our leaders and... In my district, we don't know really English. When I realized that many students here, they know English very well. I was at, on the bed, I was really crying. One of them, she came, she approached me and she asked me that, what make you to cry? And I told her that, Lily, this situation it is difficult for me to adapt to myself. She told me that maybe you can stop crying because we are here. Hmm? We help you how we can. And I, I said that maybe if we start together, I will learn more from them. That's how I adapt myself on this school. Good afternoon, class. Good afternoon, Aisha. Uh, we are here to present as a group eight. I said, did you go alone when you went to shop for like your first time, for like winter oh, stuff? No. And did you get was here? Oh, okay. Okay. See, <laughs> You feel excited for the winter? Excited? I'm excited for snow. Yeah. Okay, First yes, time. For seven months? No, no. So, are you serious? No. Having Yvonne at Harvard makes me feel like I'm never lost. Even if I can feel lost, homesick or anything, I'm just going to be like, Yvonne, how did you deal with it? <laughs> It is amazing having a short girl here. You know, we have our own story, and it's a continuous story, and we started somewhere in Rwanda at home, and now here we are, somewhere foreign, and being able to experience that together as well. It's also really exciting to know that I have this network. I know I'll have this friend who will maybe be president one day, or be the head of UN, or they're in everything. And they're spectacular women. This Skype thing is so good. We share our phone. I go to Magaran. How she was. So when we go to Magaran, we share Skype. Now I'm going to go to Magaran. I'm going to go to So last summer, I went back home and I worked with Partners in Health. I was shadowing doctors. It was my first time to go back home since I got to the U.S. So when my grandfather, he's been sick for almost like three years. He called me and he was like, you need to come home and like take care of me. Because he think I'm like a, a hardcore doctor now. I'm like, I am still struggling with organic chemistry. I don't know what I'm doing. When my grandfather passed away, definitely was a very hard time because I was far away and family was getting together. But I, I feel like that just reinforces my passion for medicine. This is my graduation at Gashara. Oh my god. I've missed Gashara so much. Being a Rwandan in America has definitely made me more patriotic. My favorite quote is actually, you cannot do all the things that the world needs, but the world needs everything that you can do. And when I think about my country, I have passion to come back to Rwanda and do such great things. Nanda shaka kutuva kuchu mikuja kuri makumiya we. Ogo nzina doko na mo nubi zemili mge kanzi nsehu iba bgira. Ogo mukani wari fashi amiwar. Arimu zako kuri suvira msi bjo. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Dunga na mu mu kubera masipe. Nana rakazi chale. Nzuzi zatu kujogo Amashura gakomeza. Uwena karangiza. I think with every year and with families accepting that their girls are going to school and their girls are changing, the idea of what a woman in Rwanda is or should be has changed. A modern Rwandan woman is one who is, to just sum it all up, empowered and just be okay to be strong. They're going to not just be leaders in Rwanda, but they're going to be leaders on the continent and in a global context. 
the experiences that they'll have and the way that they've learned to advocate for themselves and how they are absolutely driven to advocate for other people will come back in the work that they do. And I have no doubt that they'll go on to be ministers of education in Rwanda. They'll be human rights attorneys for the UN. They will go on and be those leaders that will help us to address some of the biggest challenges that we face around the world. I never know and I never seen school like this. It's an amazing school. It's a school which is full of opportunity. You can't imagine. That was my first opportunity.